to pick up kind of where I left off two weeks ago. Uh, so just kind of a little bit of a review. Two weeks ago, I preached a message called Flee Fornication, Get a Wife. That is God's plan. Fornication is 100% unacceptable. There is uh, never an excuse. There's never a reason. There's ne- you, you can't justify it. There's no way to justify it. It's always bad. And so the remedy for that, because it's always going to be a temptation, the Bible teaches very clearly it's to, it's to get a wife. And so just a, a few verses from chapter 6. In verse 18, it says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. So a very serious thing there. And so then when we get to chapter 7, um, we looked at some of this last week, but I want to I want to review some of these things and then I want to get a little more detailed in what was my final point because I, I, I wanted to make sure I did it justice. And so in chapter 7, verse 1, he's kind of continuing this thought, all right? He's just told everyone to flee fornication. And that was something, you know, if you study the book of Acts, that it was... It was a challenge for them, okay? A lot of these people, they were Gentiles. They came from a a culture and a society that did not have a lot of morals. And so whenever they would go and Gentiles would start getting saved, they would always tell them the three things. Abstain from fornication, pollutions of idols, and from eating the blood. They would always tell these people that because it was something that was very common in their culture. They didn't think anything of it. And we're seeing that today where people think absolutely nothing of couples shacking up, even if they're not married, but it's, it's 100% unacceptable, but it is a part of our culture and, but it has no place in the church culture. And so no excuses for it at all. And so in chapter or chapter seven, verse one, it says now concerning the things wherever you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now, I don't know what exactly they wrote to him. But they obviously had some questions. All right, you told us, I'm just, I'm reading between the lines here, going off of what we've seen in the book of Acts and just other things Paul wrote. But I can just imagine when they heard abstain from fornication, they had some questions about that because, hey, you know, we tend to enjoy the opposite sex. You know, we intend, we tend to enjoy the physical. Okay. That is a natural human thing. And so, you know, they've asked him about that. Hey, you know, we want, we want the physical relationship. And so they are asking about this and he says, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now that's going to be bad news for these people. That's not going to be what they want to hear. This is not something that, you know, it's, it's not good news. Okay. But he's telling it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, Let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. All right, this is how you avoid it, okay? You get your own husband, you get your own wife, and then you can touch, and then, and there's no problem there. There's no sin there because marriage is honorable and all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge, okay? So, I mean, that's real clear. And so he's telling them, you know, because once again, this culture, they're not used to this whole marriage thing and especially a marriage till death do you part and so he's got to give them some instruction here hey this isn't about just going and doing whatever with whoever you want you get your own wife let every wife a woman have her own husband and then verse three let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband you all meet each other's needs you all satisfy each other the wife hath not power of her own body but the husband and likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. That, that flies in the face of feminism and what people are taught today. But no, listen, if you're married, okay, I know, I know our culture and our laws say, women, that it's your own body. And if you get pregnant as a result of that relationship that you had, you're allowed to go kill your baby. But understand that God has no, God does not recognize that one bit. And you know what? That's not just your body. That's not just your baby. That's the husband's too. It's his body and it's his baby. Okay. Now our laws aren't going to back me up on that. Okay. So ladies, if you want to go and you want to butcher your child, you can go ahead and do that. We live in America. Okay. But God will not be pleased with that. And God will not be okay with that. And you are wicked and immoral for doing something like that. And so just keep that in mind. All right. We need, you need to understand 
that you know, our laws today, we uh, Christians, we keep forgetting that as Americans, you know, America, it's not a Christian nation anymore. All laws do not back up what the Bible teaches. Okay, but God's laws have not changed, and we can still live by these things. Now, thankfully, there are no laws in America that tell us we can't do what it tells us to do in this chapter. Okay, there's no laws that tell me I have to touch other women. There's no law that tells me I have to get divorced or that I can't render to my wife due benevolence and things like that. So, you know, we don't have excuses to just throw out God's law. We still are in a place in our country where we, we can still be moral. We can still do the right thing and live and have a biblical family the way God intended. So, you know, don't let America be an excuse for you just, you know, being immoral. So verse 5 says, Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. Now keep this in mind here. Paul here, he's given his opinion. And he flat out tells us this. I'm given this, this is my opinion. He said, for I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide, even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. The apostle, in the Apostle Paul's opinion, people were better off being unmarried. Okay? But, understand, he said, this isn't God talking here. This is just me talking. The, all right? It is not a sin for a man to never get married or a woman to never get married. Okay? It's not a sin. But do you all understand that most people cannot live a lifetime of celibacy and will not live a lifetime of celibacy? Now, Paul was able to do that. Paul didn't have a problem with that. And it was beneficial to him because, you know what, when he's going around getting stoned and beat with rods and whipped and thrown into prison, you know, he didn't have a wife to worry about, which was beneficial to him. But understand that this is not most people. This is not, this is not something that, um, you know, we need to go around promoting. You know, we're not going to go and encourage people to live a life of celibacy. Okay. Now, if that's something that God has called you to, and you feel like you can live that way and you'll be fine and you won't have a problem, then great. But you know what? We're not going to find a lot of those people. There's not a lot of apostle Paul's in the world. And so Paul, he said, this is, this is, you know, this is what I think. This is my opinion because this was who he was. But then he goes in the end, but he said, if they cannot contain, and he said, let them marry for it is better to marry than to burn. Okay. You shouldn't be, God doesn't want you to be burning in your lust. He wants you. God made you to have that desire so it could be fulfilled, but it's going to be supposed to be fulfilled with a spouse and with only a spouse. And that, and that's all there is to it. It's that cut and dry. And so Paul in this passage, he makes it clear it was only his opinion, not it was not God's opinion, that it was better for a man to be alone. In you know, and people do they get mad about this. Okay, I had a guy that got all offended by my message two weeks ago. He got all offended by what I preached, and I'm like, what in the world? I mean, I, I didn't think I said anything offensive in that message. But you know what they do? Because people, you know, first of all, he was a millennial, and millennials get offended by everything. I mean, you know, millennials, they've all been trained on how to be offended and they are good at it and they know how to find offense and they're always trying to put themselves in little groups. You know, they can't just be in a group like male and female, you know, they can't, you know, it's always got to be some kind of, you know, age demographic or uh, salary demographic or whatever. You know, they're always, they're always got to put themselves in some category. And if you ever insult one of them, you've insulted all of them. This guy's like demanding that I apologize to all these men that I offended. And I'm like, yeah, that ain't going to happen. Because <laughs> for, I mean, I'll apologize when I say something wrong or even if I just say something stupid. But, you know, for preaching the Bible, you know, just because you got offended by this. I mean, let me tell you, you know, if he listens to this message, I recommend he go back to his video games because I promise he's not going to like some of the things that are said in this message. So you were warned. All right. And I'm not I'm not trying to be offensive. But listen, our society is going downhill. Our society is a joke. Our culture is a joke. 
what we are turning out and calling men today is a joke. And you know, somebody needs to say something about it, right? Somebody needs to preach a truth about these things. And you know what? It's not me. I'm not the one that said in Genesis 2.18, it is not good that man should be alone. I'm not the one that said that. Okay. It was God that made man. And it was God that made, you know, God saw man. God saw everything that he made. And it was good. Behold, it was good. But then he gets to man. It's not good. It's not good that man should be alone. And God made something that was perfect for that man. And it was a woman. And you know what? God, you know, we, we complete each other. And they did. God, they came together. And Bible says they became one flesh. And God called them Adam. Adam called her Eve. God called them Adam. Why? He gave them one name. Why? Because they were one flesh. When my wife and I got married, she took my name. She became a McMurtry. Why? Because she married me. And that's something that we get, we get that from the Bible. And so, you know, Paul understood what he had was a gift that was not possessed by most. And instead of giving himself the special title and then, you know, going around raising awareness for it and demanding equality and, you know, all that kind of thing, you know what he did? He just served the Lord and he instructed people, you know, who were normal on how they should serve the Lord. You know, and and you're allowed to give your testimony. If, If you are some unique individual that has some unique circumstance, unique, you know, talent or, or gift, you know, that's fine. But, you know, I'm getting sick of these people who do, they, they've got this weird little thing in their own. They're always trying to create these groups, you know, and they do. And, you know, and it's real easy to do today with social media and stuff. So, you know, if you are, if you're that one, you know, if you are that one unique individual, you know, even if it's a weirdo in the online world, you can find a bunch of people like you. And a lot of these guys, this guy that got offended too, He's like associates with these, they, they call them MGTOW. Men go their own way. And I'm telling you, that they're a joke. I have a few things to say about them too. It's a, very, it's a very wicked thing. And what is this? You know, it's probably one loser, you know, that got burned and, you know, is giving up on women. But he can't be content to just be pathetic by himself. He's got to go find other people to be pathetic with him. And you know, once again, in the social media world, you'll never be lonely. If you're the village idiot, you can make a village idiot group and you'll find, you know, a bunch of people. You know, you can get a hundred friends because you know what? There's a lot of villages and they all have a village idiot. And so, you know, you can all feel like you're important and you're something special when you do that. But listen, this is church. All right. You know, we, we have, we're a congregation of believers. There's a lot of people and you know what? Most of us are normal. All right. And vast majority of people are normal and they need that husband or a wife. And so just some simple facts today are just one, men need women and women need men. It, it's just a fact. Fornication, 100% unacceptable. There is no place. There is no excuse. There is no reason for sex outside of marriage. Marriage is the, and marriage is the answer for that. I have these desires. Well, because God wanted you to be attracted to that one that you're married to. He wanted you to be able to enjoy each other physically. He wanted you to bear children. And so God put that in you so we could continue on as a society. And, you know, we're doing everything we can to prevent that today. We're pumping people full of drugs and different things to help stop all that. And maybe that's a lot of the people's problem today. Maybe that's a lot of the you know, reason people are psycho today with all these hormones and things women are taking. You know, women, they struggle enough emotionally. The last thing you need to go do it is giving them things that make their hormones go even more crazy. You know, and that's a subject for another day. But listen, you know, and so when it comes to that physical relationship, if you can wait, great. You know, if you want to wait until you're 30 and save up a bunch of money and, you know, build a house, and do, that's fine. You are free to do that if you can wait. But not everybody's going to be willing to do that. Not everybody's going to make it that long. But I think it ought to be the goal. I think it ought to be the goal of every young man to find a wife and the goal of every young woman to find a husband. And I I think if you happen to find them early, thank God for it. If you don't find them till later, that's fine. As long as you behave yourself during that time when you're single. Just because you're 30 years old doesn't give you an excuse to go fornicate. You don't get to do any of that until you're married. And so, you know, and this is one of the things that these groups that are out there, men going their own way, they bring up, you know, they bring up, you know, kind of some of the challenges of society today. Okay. And some of their concerns with society are legit. For example, you know, women are no exception when it comes to just being 
promiscuous and just being wicked. Okay, there's a lot of women out there that they have no boundaries. They have not been taught, you know, the value of virtue. They have not been taught, you know, the value of virginity and go, they haven't been taught the importance of getting to the marriage altar pure. That's not what they're being taught. Young women today, they're being taken by their mothers to doctors to get birth control prescribed because they're going to mess around. That's just, that's what kids do. No, that's not, that's not what, that, maybe that's what kids do today, but it's not what they should do. Somebody needs to teach them, no, that's not normal. No, you don't have to do that kind of thing. And you know what? While a lot of our society is going that way, a lot of them aren't. Okay? There's a lot of people that do it right. You know, and the church that I grew up in, I mean, most of the people did it right. A lot of people did it right. I've been to, I've been to like four or five weddings th just this year. And it's all been young people who made it to the altar pure, like they were supposed to. And you know what? If you're in a good church that preaches the truth and that teaches, you know, some morals and things like that, you'll see a lot of that as long as it's taught in the church and then it's backed up in the home. You'll, you'll see that. It can be done. They are out there. But yes, feminism is run rampant and is ridiculous. And feminism is destroying women. It's destroying marriages. Yes, the laws in our country are a joke. Yes, you can marry a woman and you can go and you can be faithful to her. You can have a bunch of kids with her. You can take care of her. You can provide for her. And then she can say, you know what? I found somebody else and she can divorce you. And you're going to have to pay child support. You know, basically try to pay for two households. She can go shack up with some bum. And you'll still probably have to pay her some alimony. That's our country that we live in. That's wicked. That's a joke. And there, a lot of these things that they complain about in our society are 100% legit. They are real things. They are real issues. They are real problems. But understand that those challenges are just things that we have to overcome. Because God's laws and even nature do not change with society. Okay? There's nowhere in the Bible where God gives a law and says, you know, but this changes if, you know, you know, it depends on the laws in your area. You know, God's laws are God's laws everywhere. And it doesn't matter how wicked our society gets. God's laws do not change and nature doesn't change. What does that mean? That means just because our society is going downhill, it doesn't change the fact that men need women and women need men. That it's, it's still a natural thing. No matter how bad our society gets, there will always be that need for the opposite sex. God put it in us. We are, we are human. We, are, we have these natural bodies. And so we will need those things. And God always intends for us, and He will always intend for us, to hold off on that relationship until marriage. That is God's plan it has been the same from the beginning, and it will never change. And so we just need to, we just need to get that in our head. We got to figure out how am I going to overcome the wickedness of the society? How am I going to do right? And how am I going to do good in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation? And you've got to figure out how to do it. And there's a lot of things we could go into, but once again, it'll help by you know you at least raising your family right. You know if you have sons and daughters. You make sure, hey, here, here's some kids. These are going to be some young men and some women, young women that are going to be pure. You know, these people are out there saying, you know, there's no pure, you know, there's no, you know, pure young men. There's no pure young women. Yeah, there are. There's going to be in my family. You know, I can at least train it in my family. I'm going to go to church where they promote more morality and where they promote purity and where it's a normal thing. And it is a normal thing in church for people to make it to the marriage altar pure. It's not a weird thing. It's not a rare thing. Now, in some churches, it is a rare thing because nobody's preaching it. Nobody's teaching it. But if you're in a church that teaches it, and if you're backing these things up in your home, you can have success in this area. And so go over to turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. So back to kind of where we left off um, two weeks ago. What is it that's you know making this so hard? Why is it that we've got all these young men that are basically forsaking marriage and even forsaking a relationship with a woman, why, why would they do that? Okay, Because somebody like me, I'm, gonna be, I'm scratching my head thinking, you know, yeah, how does that work? How's, how's that working out for you? But it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 
in, or I'm in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Y'all see that? That last verse, it talks about fleeing youthful lust. Okay. We talk about fleeing fornication. You know, there are some things it's okay for us to be scared of. There are some, you know, we like to be like big macho men where we can stand up to anything. We can handle anything, but there are some things that's nothing wrong with us running from. And fornication is one of those things. And youthful lusts, okay? There are those youthful lusts, there are those things of the flesh that are a temptation to us. And we have to learn to run from those things. And you know, where are those things any more than on the television set and on the computer screen today? The youthful lust. The temptations of the eyes. Those things that you know, we see that they appeal to our flesh. And they cause us to think things that we shouldn't and our minds to go place they shouldn't. They are all over the place. And the Bible says to flee those things, to run from those things. Uh, look at Romans chapter 13 and verse 13. Romans chapter 13 and verse 13 says, Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Okay? Don't make provision for the flesh. Don't even give yourself an opportunity to give in to that temptation. What's it saying here? It's saying you're going to have temptation, so you know what you got to do? You got to run from it. You've got to make sure you don't have provision. And listen, I'm not telling anybody what to do, but if you've got cable television, all right, if you've got television in your home, you always have temptation right there, ready for you to go. If you've got the internet, you've got temptation. I mean, right there at just a few clicks of the keyboard or a few clicks of the mouse, you can fulfill some serious youthful lust that can cause a lot of problems. And I'm afraid with these things we have today, we carry them around with us in our cell phones. We, we get, you know, temptation for the eyes, right there, available 24-7, and I'm afraid people have given into it. You know, I hear some of the statistics about how many people are addicted to pornography and how many have viewed pornography, and it scares me to death every time I hear that. And you know what? I can't help but think that that's a huge part of the problem, one of the reasons people can't find a wife, because, you know, what is that, you know, image of a woman today? You know, the, you know, the perfect woman today. People have a distorted sense of what a woman should look like today. Where do they get that from? They get it from all the junk they're watching. They, and I, I don't want to, you know, I, I got to be careful what I talk about, but I mean just what they expect from a woman. Listen, if you marry some young, pure virgin girl, she's not go, when you go on your honeymoon, she's not going to act like the women that you're watching on television. It's not, it's not going to be that way. And we've got a lot of these young men, maybe they've never done anything physically, but their minds are already warped, I mean, messed up, because they've been watching this filth. They've, I mean, hours and hours of this junk, and it has completely warped their minds. And a lot of these men, they have unrealist, unrealistic expectations of a woman. And what they are wanting, they're just, they're never going to get and I'm amazed at some of these guys, too, that, you know, they talk about how they can't find a wife. You know, they're all too fat. They're all too this. And I look at these guys and I'm like, man, you got B.O. You know, I am standing here talking to you. I can smell you. And you wonder why you can't get a wife. You look like something that just crawled out of a cave, you know, and then you expect this supermodel to marry you. I'm sorry. Where are you getting this idea from? You know what the problem is with these people? They live in fantasy worlds. These same men that are leaving the use of a woman, you know where they spend a lot of their time? Playing video games. Playing video games, too, where women, women don't look like they do on video games. All right? And they, have, they, they, go, they live in these fantasy worlds, 
And they, they do, they're, they're addicted to these video games. They'll play, I mean, hours and hours and hours of these video games. And, you know, you look at these people, they're stereotypical. I mean, you know, that typical basement dweller is playing his video games all the time. I promise you he's wearing like a Captain America shirt or, you know, Superman underwear or something like that. These people are, they're fascinated with, you know, superheroes and comic books. They read these things all the time. And let me tell you something about comic book characters. I watched a documentary a long time ago about comic books, okay? The people who started all the comics, originally, their writings and things they did, it was, they were pornographic comics, but they made it illegal. So what did they do? They started, you know, putting a little more clothes on some of the people and they made them into superheroes and stuff. And these, these people who started the comic books, these people were perverts, you know, corrupting the minds of people. And, and you have these same people that that's how they are. That guy that was, you know, demanding an apology for me, he's wearing a Batman t-shirt. Oh well, yeah, that figures. You know, that is exactly what I would expect from somebody like you. You know, you, you fit every one of the stereotypes. You know, sitting there on your couch. I guarantee you, you know, he probably just got done playing his Xbox or PlayStation or something like that. So, you know, you get off- he'll get offended by this, but you know what? He can go, you know, self-medicate and get some therapy playing his video games. Go into your little fantasy world, you know, where you can just be alone. You can be your own superhero on there, your own, you know, you're the big guy on there. You know, you beat all the bad guys and, you know, you save the women on there. You can't, they, these guys can't do anything off their couch. And that is, and that is, these people today, their minds are so messed up. They're so warped. They have no sense of reality. And these same people, occasionally when they can, you know, bring themselves to go out into society, what do they do? They just complain about everybody and they especially complain about women because they don't live up to their, you know, expectations that they got from, you know, seeing the women in the comic books and on their video games and on the pornography and stuff they're watching. And these guys don't even understand. They're just pervs is what they are, whose minds have been destroyed. And, you know, they need to, they need to pray that God will clean up their mind. God can heal their mind. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I just... I highly recommend you just never go down that path because honestly, I don't, I don't know the way to find healing from that stuff. And, you, and there's, a, there's some things you just don't ever want to see. You don't ever want to get involved in. And the Bible warns us to flee that youthful lust. And it's all over there in the television. It's on the internet. Don't make provision for the lust of the flesh. Okay, And we don't have time to talk a lot about this tonight, but even when it comes to dating, even when you find that one or you're interested in someone, you know, I, I believe in chaperone dating. Well, why? The Bible says not to make provision for the lust of the flesh, to fulfill the lust thereof. Well, what's going to happen, okay, when you find some woman that you're attracted to, if you go off by yourself, you're going to want to touch. And the Bible says it's good for a man not to touch a woman. So why would you put yourself in that situation where you're going to be tempted like that? I understand, you know, you're going to need some privacy to a certain extent so you can actually get to know each other and talk a little bit. But you don't need to go off driving by yourself and go parking somewhere by yourself. There's just some places you don't need to go, some things that you don't need to do. You're only opening yourself up to temptation. Okay? You, know, you don't send, you don't teach your kids to be pure and then send them to the school dance. Okay? All that's going to be is a bunch of girls not wearing enough clothes. All it's going to be is them putting their hands all over each other. And then you're going to wonder why they got tempted, why they gave it a temptation. Listen, I'm sorry, but that was just stupid. Why would you do that? Why would you open? Why would you put them in that situation? Yeah, you just, there are some things you just avoid. It's called flee youthful us. Oh, this is what all the teenagers do. Yes, and all the teenagers are getting pregnant. All the teenagers are becoming pervs. All the teenagers, you know, are, you know, are growing up and living in fornication. We are Christians. That is not acceptable. And we have the same lust of the flesh that the world does. And if you send your Christian child to that dance and you let him put his hands all over some half-dressed girl, he's probably going to give in to some temptation. So you know what you do? You say, I'm not, we're not going to give our, any provision for the lust of the flesh. We're going to stay away from those things. You're not going. Who cares if all the other kids in school are going? All the other kids in your school are probably going to get STDs. You don't need to. I know we're not supposed to say stuff like that, but it's just the truth. And we, you, know, you don't need to do that. You're going to make it to the altar pure. You're going to actually be healthy. 
And you don't have to have some... You know, I, I'm not going to get up here and talk about how disgusting some of those diseases are. But you know what, parents? You ought to have a talk with your kids about how disgusting some of those diseases are. These people who have some of these STDs and things, it's really gross. And it, 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 it makes me sick. And they ought to be sickened by those things because it can happen to them if they mess around. And we need to warn people of the reality of that. And that's why you do. You want to stay pure. So... You know, but we do, you know, you need to have your parents involved. You know, and one of our society's problems, everyone's special needs, okay? Well, you know, what if I don't have Christian parents? You know, what if I have parents, you know, who don't really care? Well, listen, you know, if I got to take somebody on a chaperone date, I will, all right? That's not going to be a lot of fun. But if you pay for my meal, all right, if you're seeing a young man or young, young lady, if you'd like to take her out to a nice dinner somewhere and you don't have parents who want to chaperone you, I'll do it as long as you pay for my meal, all right? But, you know, hey, sometimes you might have to pay the price. It might cost you a little more because of your situation. But, you know, I'm sick of everyone's special needs. I'm sick of everyone coming, well, I've got this situation, so therefore the rules don't apply to me. No, you've got a tough situation. That just means it's going to be a little harder for you. But you know what? The The rewards are still going to be great. You'll be glad that you did the right thing. Just figure it out. I don't have parents. Well, and get you know, get a pastor. My pastor won't help. Get somebody in the church. I guarantee you, there's somebody in this church that would gladly chaperone anyone in here if it meant a free meal at a nice restaurant. All right, you know who volunteers? Yeah, Brother Mark's already raised his hand. All right, we got people all over. Y'all are covered. You got nothing to worry about there. All right, you can have chaperone dating. Okay, and you need to do that so you don't fulfill the lust of your flesh because you're going to get tempted. You know, and so you know when it comes to dating, you know, don't get serious with people. If you're not ready for marriage, okay? You know, don't let your 17 or 18 year old be dating unless you think they're ready to get married and provide for a wife. If they're not, if you're like, no, my 17 year old, he still wears Superman underwear and still plays video games all day and reads comic books all night. Don't let him start dating a girl. He's not ready for that. You, you make him have some responsibility. You make him go get his pathetic, lazy behind out there uh, and get a job. You know, let him teach him how to set an alarm clock so he can wake himself up and go out there and accomplish something with his life. And when he has done that and he is ready to pay his own bills and pay for the bills of a woman and very likely a child not long after that, then you know what? I, I would encourage him to go get that wife. Hey, when you're ready, all right, yeah. Fornication, unacceptable. Yeah, it's God's will for young men to get married. And when my boys are ready to take care of a wife and children, and they're like, you know, I'm going to say, all right, go for it. You know, you find one. If you know if she, she's good, you know, meet certain criteria, go for it. That's fine. But listen, because when, when, when you get married... You know, you're not going to have time for a lot of those video games and things and your superhero movies and your comic books. You know, you're, going to, you're not going to be able to keep up with all the latest editions on those things. You're going to have too many bills to pay. You know, that you're not going to be able to afford you know, to find out if you know, the Incredible Hulk you know, survives his battle or whatever. You know, it just, you're, not, you're not going to get caught up in that stuff. And it's amazing how many... You know, now listen, there are some grown men who are married, have kids, and are providing for their families, and somehow have managed to figure out how to keep comic books in their life. All right? and, and, you know, I guess I won't be too mean to you as long as you're doing all your other responsibilities. But, you know, if you really love them that much, I think it can be done. All right? I haven't figured out how to do it. I don't have time for comic books. I can't afford them, anything like that. But, uh, you know, if you can, oh, okay, fine. But uh, people have. They've, they've figured it out. But, you know, young men today... They do. They have, they have very warped perceptions. It says in Psalms 101, verse 1. Let me turn over there and make sure I, I quote this right. It says in verse 2, it says, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come with me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Now, to this day, I can't figure out what David was talking about. Because I know they didn't have TVs back then. But it sure looks like he's talking about a television in that passage right there. And so, you know, I, that's the way I interpret that. You know, and pe- but people are doing it. They're setting these things before their eyes. They're watching this filth. They're being brainwashed. 
Their minds are being corrupted. Their minds are being warped. I mean, look, there's a reason we've got so many homosexuals today. That is not a nat- that's not even a natural thing. That's a completely unnatural thing, yet it's spreading like wildfire. Why is that? Because people's minds are getting warped from the things they're watching on television and the internet. It's, it's perverting the minds of young people. And it's, it's turning them into these things. And so, uh, you know, young men, you've got to keep your heart and mind pure. And then also, and I'm going to be quick on these, you need to keep your body busy. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. You remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. You know, one of the reasons that people get themselves in so much trouble today is because they have nothing to do. The reason people get perverted today is because they have nothing to do but sit around and watch TV and read comic books and play video games. That's why they get so, that's why they get perverted. They got, they have nothing to do. We're supposed to be busy. God made man to want to work. And when men aren't working, their minds are going to go elsewhere and they're going to start going after other things. And I'm afraid parents, we're just way too easy on our young men. Listen, our 14, 15, 16 year olds, I mean, these, you know, they're, they're practically grown men today. But yet, they don't have a lot of responsibility. And, and then we give them all these tools to corrupt their minds. And by the time they're 18, 19, you know, we're at, that's when we start giving them responsibility. But we've already destroyed their minds before they get to that point. You've got to keep your body busy. And this is young men and young ladies. You know, maybe, maybe ladies wouldn't get caught up in gossip so much if they were busy. If they had things to do, if they had some responsibilities. But turn over to Proverbs chapter 26 in verse 13. You know, the perils of a sluggard, they're just never ending. It says in verse 13, the slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. What's he doing? He's making excuses. I can't go outside. I can't go out in the streets. There's a lion out there. Okay, that's what all these millennials do. They've got excuses for everything. They all got some kind of special need, and so they make excuses. There's always an, as an excuse. Well, there's a reason why I can't do this. There's a reason the Bible doesn't work to work for me. There's a reason that these rules don't apply to me. They make excuses. Verse 14, as the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his head, bed. What does that mean? You know why they toss and turn at night? You know why they can't get any good sleep? Because they're not tired. They didn't do anything all day. You know why? They were lazy. They did nothing. But listen, when you work, you know, you're out cold when it comes, when it, you go to bed. That sleep is precious. But that slothful man, they don't do any work, so they don't have good sleep. They're back and forth, turning all night. Um, verse 15. And you know, and they'll use that excuse, I can't sleep, for why they play video games all night. No, you can't sleep at night because you were being pathetic and lazy all day long. You know, and that's why you can't sleep at night. Verse 15, the slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it to his mouth. He's faking a disability. He's trying to act like I can't feed myself because he doesn't want to take care of himself. He can't handle the responsibility. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can re- render a reason. They, you know, the slugger, the lazy person, they don't, they just, they're always smarter than everybody. You know, these millennials, that's their problem. They're smarter than everybody else. They know more than God knows. You know, they, they understand the way it is in 2017 and the rest of us, we just don't. Even though everyone agrees, even though the Bible agrees and the pastor agrees and the people in the church agree, you know, these millennial types, we know more than everybody else because we've got this special revelation. You know, you don't know how smart we are. You know, I beat Final Fantasy in two weeks or something like that. You know, I mean, just... You know, some, they, they think they're smart because of these things. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. And so you've got, but you do, you have to keep your body busy. And then also, you need to overcome something. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God made, and this is a huge part of their problem. But it says in Genesis 1, 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God told man to have dominion over everything. What does that mean? It means to dominate. It means to conquer. 
God told them to have dominion over everything. And you know one of the problems with men today is they never dominate anything. They don't know how to handle, they can't handle competition. You know why they can't handle relationships? Because it's like they just want this woman to just show up for them. They can't go and compete for the affection of a woman. They can't compete if there's other guys around. You know, they, they can't handle that. They can't handle the fact that, you know what, it's a challenge to maybe win a girl over. It's a challenge to, you know, romance her a little bit. You know, it's a challenge to convince her that you're, you're worth marrying. You know, it's a challenge to go out and, you know, earn some money so you can buy an engagement ring for her. It's a challenge to provide for her. They can't overcome any of those things. That's too hard. That's too much trouble. I've had guys before who didn't have a wife and were wanted a wife, but, you know, I'm like, well, you know, have you thought about going and visiting some other churches? You know, maybe, and you know, I'll, I'll suggest some that maybe live a couple hours away. Oh, oh, that's too much trouble. Well, enjoy being single, all right? Because you know what? Sometimes it's a challenge. And sometimes you've got to overcome some things. But it's the millennial generation that was taught, you know, no competition. It was the millennial generation that they gave everybody trophies to, wasn't it? It was millennial generation. They were told, you're all winners, no matter how pathetic you are. No matter, it doesn't matter, you came in last in the race because you were just so pathetic. You're all a winner. You all get a trophy, but that is not real life. If you're a loser, if you're pathetic, if you can't handle anything, you're not going to be able to find a wife. And then you're especially not going to get a good one. You're going to get some consolation prize that nobody wants. You know, you're going to, you're, that, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get that woman that's out there that'll take, that'll take anybody. Because, why? Because you're pathetic. But this is, that's what real life is. And so you do, you need to teach young men to overcome some things. And listen, beating a video game is not overcoming anything. Okay, great. You're good at football, playing Madden NFL or whatever. You know, you're good at that, but that is, you know, that's a lot different than actually being good at football. Where real people are trying to tackle you and real people are trying to hurt you and you have to overcome real obstacles. Listen, sports is a good thing. It teaches some character. It teaches you how to have some toughness. And it's good to be competitive because you got to be competitive in this life. When you, if you want to get a job, you got to compete for that job. You've got to prove that you're better than other people. You know, you don't just have a right to a job. I know this is America and people think that's how it is. You don't just write, have a right to a good job with benefits and all these things. You need to go out and you need to work for it. You need to accomplish something. You need to have dominion over something in your life. You need to, you need to accomplish something. But men today, they don't want to conquer anything other than the video games because they don't want responsibility. And a wife means responsibility. And it's a big responsibility. It's a huge responsibility. Children are a massive responsibility. Providing for children is a huge responsibility. Now, I know our government, they're doing everything they can to help you provide for them. But how is that working out? How is that helping families? So the problem with that, you know, the problem with welfare is these people, it's enabling them to have no character. It's enabling them to not overcome anything, therefore making them pathetic and making them raise pathetic children. And we need to overcome these things. But they can't handle responsibility. They can't handle the competition. They can't handle rejection. So when you get a trophy for everything you've ever played in, you're not going to know how to handle rejection. You're not going to know how to handle losing. But that's just part of it. There, you know, there's going to be some girls out there, guys, you think that's the one I want, and some other guy is going to beat you to her. She's going to like him instead of you, and you're going to have to deal with the fact that you know he was better looking or better shape or whatever it is you think that made her like him instead of you. And you know what you've got to do? You know, you've got to go back on the hunt again. And that stinks, but you know what? You're going to keep going. You're going to keep on trying. And they, they, but they can't do it. They can't handle relationships. And you know, uh, I don't know if anybody saw Pastor Anderson. He put out this documentary, um, Kamikaze Nation, about Japan. That blew my mind. Well, how, anybody in here see that? Well, man, you need to go watch that. And it, it, it goes a lot along with this. In Japan, it's worse over there than it is in America. Listen, America's pathetic. But Japan's even worse. There's this Nintendo game these guys play over there called Love Plus where they have virtual girlfriends. And these guys, they love it. They have virtual girlfriends where they have these, you know, they, they talk with them. And they write them notes, and they write them notes, and 
You have to see it. It is disturbing. And they have these virtual girls that are like waiting for them when they get home. And they love it because you know why? They don't have to worry about them cheating on them. You know, they don't have to worry about them causing them any trouble. But listen, you know what? Part of being married means problems. And you got to overcome them. But that's just life. People want a life without any kind of conflict. But I promise if you get married, you're going to have some conflict. All right? It's just, it's just, it's part of it. But these people, they can't handle it. So they have these virtual girlfriends. I'm sorry, folks, that's weird. I don't care. Pretty soon that might be considered normal in America and it'll be the LGBTQ and then they'll probably have another letter for, you know, V for virtual relationships. I don't know. And we'll be supposed to expect, you know, accept that and they'll probably be allowed to get married and things like that. But that will always be weird. And that will, that will always be perverted. They call, these guys, they call them, you know, Hikiki Mori, which means they stay indoors. They have these young men. They never leave their homes. They sit in all day playing video games, reading comics, watching porn. They call them herbivores because they abstain from any sex life at all. And they are content in these virtual worlds. That's only a, that's only a couple steps away from what I've been talking about tonight. You know, in Romans chapter 1, verse 27, it says, And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their heir, which was meat. And people get mad at me when I say when you leave the natural use of a woman, you know, you end up becoming a homo. But listen, it, it doesn't happen overnight. This isn't saying here it happened overnight. Okay, when you leave these people who leave the natural use of a woman... Eventually, that's what happens. Eventually, they start burning their lust one towards another. You know, I preached a while back on that, you know, the iniquity of sod and, you know, the pride, the fullness of bread. And people try to make the argument that those things are all worse than the abominations. It wasn't just the homosexuality, why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was all those other things. No, those other things are what led them to a point of being perverts like they were. And people, they don't just one day just boom. I'm done with women. I'm a queer. That's not how it happens. Okay. What do they do? They give up on the challenges of life. They give up on normal. They leave that. And then it, it's eventually, it might take years. Listen, some of the nasty pervs that end up in jail and stuff, they don't start doing their perverted acts. So there's a forties, fifties and sixties. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, if you're, if you're a little Hikiki Mori that's at home that, you know, wants to stay in and play video games all day, you might think he's fine. He doesn't have homosexual tendencies. You know, that's fine. We're not commanded to get married or anything like that. Well, listen, he might not be desiring that right now, but you let him keep doing that until he's in his 30s and in his 40s. And eventually, he's going to be that pervert. Eventually, that will be him. These things, they don't happen overnight. Societies don't become like Sodom and Gomorrah overnight. Men don't become perverts overnight. These, are, these things are long processes. These are roads that people take when they leave the path that God left. And the, this world is bad. Our country's bad. Society is going downhill. Churches are going right along with them. But you know what? That does not mean it's time to change. That's the last thing we need to do. It, does, it, it means it's time to get back to the old paths. It means it's time to start doing things God's way. And fornication, it's completely unacceptable among God's people. We have to reject the ways of our culture. We have to reject the ways of our society. We have to raise our children to leave home when they get married and then teach them that when they are married, they need to be fruitful and multiply. We need our children to keep their hearts and minds pure in the meantime. We need to continue to do, and they need to continue to keep their hearts and minds pure even after they get married. And listen, that person who never fornicates will be much less likely to ever commit adultery. And we read two weeks ago a lot of the consequences of fornication and just how big of a deal it is. How many people that God killed in the Old Testament because of fornication. But you know, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32... It says about adultery, okay, and this is when you, this is sexual immorality, at, you know, uh, with a person who is when a person is married, 
But it says, Whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of man. Therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Right here the Bible is warning us about the consequences of adultery. They are severe. This, the stain, it does, the pain from it, it does not go away. And we have got, and it is so important that married people never commit adultery. One of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery. And if you get married pure, it's no guarantee that you'll never commit adultery. But it's going to be much more likely. And we can't expect young people to live a life giving their flesh every little thing at once. One more sexual immorality after the other and then expect them to get married and now all of a sudden they have character. Now all of a sudden they can control themselves. Now all of a sudden they can do the right thing and they can control their flesh. That's not, that's not how it works. They might, but they're going to be much less likely. We've got, to, we've got to teach them these things young, at a young age. and Because there is no exception. And these, these same people too, these same people that are teaching the men go their own way thing, these people still use prostitutes and stuff like that. Well, how is that acceptable? Well, you know why they justify that? Because that's a way they can get what they want physically with none of the responsibilities. Because that's ultimately what this is about. We have a society that can't handle responsibility. And you don't deserve that, that physical relationship. That is something that's special that God gave for a husband and a wife. And you don't deserve those pleasures unless you are responsible. And I know in our, in our country today, our laws don't back that up. You know, you, you can enjoy those things, I guess, without being responsible. But you know what? There are still, the consequences come with it. And these consequences are real. A lot of murders are because of, you know, cheating and things like that. A lot of misery. You know, you, you just, you go look at these people, the lives they live, and then the relationships they have. It is nothing that I, I would desire. Those who remain pure until marriage and are only ever with each other, those are the best relationships in the world. And th th that's what every one of us ought to train our children to have. That's the only way they'll ever be happy. And so we need to keep on teaching these things. And so having said all that, I apologize for nothing. I, 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 I stand by what I said, and uh, I apologize I don't preach on that more. Uh, that's all. That's all. So, with that, let's all stand together.